Well, hello, welcome to another video and live stream making the game Song Ringer. Thankfully, it's in a phase where it's almost finished. It's like a finish line's in sight. Feels good. Feels good to have this now three and a half year, almost four year project almost finished. Um, so let me show you what I'm up to right now. iOS version. This is going uh, quite well. I made some quality of life improvements that got me feeling really good build times for iOS projects cut into third for like debug um, and that's just huge I mean we're talking going from like 220 seconds two and a half minutes or something like that down to just or wait no more than that I don't know shaved off probably about a minute off the of build times um, so anyways I've got everything um, running I'll, I'll run through everything that I've done here with the iOS version um, to get it building from the command line. So you notice I do not have Xcode open, but I do have the simulator open. Um, if the simulator is open, it basically triggers my own custom hammer spoon scripts to whenever I commit, press the command B uh, keystroke, it builds my iOS project. But if the simulator is not open, command B will build the regular Mac project. So it's like the, I always just press Command B or Command R to run it. Um, it's super simple. So basically, what uh, what those do is it calls a make file, um, calls my make file, and I've got everything set up here in the make file so we can run and build everything. So here's how it would open the simulator. Um, I found this via a script online, um, but basically, yeah, you just call open a simulator, pass in the args for the current. Uh, simulator you want to use. I looked up uh, the simulator for iPhone 5 version 1 or 11.3 for my system or whatever had this UDID. So uh, yeah, so that's how it, I open the simulator. If I don't have it open, I can just type make sim and it opens it up for me with the right simulator and uh, it's ready to go. So uh, then there's make iOS which basically uses my Mac build uh, script and uh, but passes in a new there's new there's a new platform flag so it always had debug and release as the first option but now it also has Mac or iOS and then it pipes all that out and tees it off so you can see it and it outputs to the build iOS debug.log so it can track it um, so let me show you what the new the new stuff in the build script does here Basically, it sets up the platform. In fact, let's uh, let's call that platform. We'll call this settings project or whatever. Uh, so there you go. This is the old. This is the old way of doing it. Basically, if it says if it's platform Mac, if it's config debug, here's the settings for the Mac project. Here's the settings for the Mac release project. Here's some new stuff about the debug. So one part about shaving off um, a good amount of time each time I build for iOS was turning off code signing, which requires hacking your iPhone simulator. Um, so it's not that hard though, it's pretty easy. Basically in your platforms folder, if you're your Xcode.app, so your, your root applications folder, Xcode app, Contents, developer, platforms, and you go into iPhone Simulator platform, developer, SDKs, iPhone Simulator SDK, and there you will find SDK settings that plist. Um, you need to edit it with Xcode because it's one of the one of them binary plist files. They didn't store it nice and um, XML -y for us at all. So basically. Um, the way to do it is you can pseudo copy it out onto your desktop, edit it with Xcode, and then um, and then pseudo copy it back. Uh, so basically, you got to change this one setting in there. It's in the default settings. It's called code signing required. You just set that to no. I also set entitlements required to no. I found that from my tests, I think that was optional though. Didn't have to actually set that to get this to work. But you do have to do this. You have to set your code sign required to no so that your simulator does not require your apps to be signed, which saves us a hell of a lot of time. 
So here's how you actually get your, um, you need to pass in some extra build arguments to Xcode build. Um, so far I've only been able to do this on the command line, but I think in today's stream, I might be able to get this to actually work in Xcode as well, save some time whenever I'm having to debug the iOS project, I won't have to do any code signing. So you need to do this, set your code signing identity to nothing, empty string. I felt that I found that I had to do set the SDK whenever I'm building the, for iOS, set it to SDK iPhone Simulator, and that causes it to build for iPhone Simulator rather than building to the default, which is the iPhone. Um, and if you try and build uh, an SDK iPhone or iOS or whatever it is, and then run that in the simulator, it won't work because the simulator is a different architecture. It's x86, 64, iPhone simulators, ARM 7, ARM 64, and all that. So, on with the knowledge dump. Um, code signing required, you gotta set that to no. And something very important is you also have to set code signing allowed to no. Some, you get all these crazy weird errors unless you set this too. I found that um, setting code signing entitlements to an empty string, which was recommended on this Stack Overflow post, uh, caused some problems whenever I would do a clean rebuild. Uh, so for some reason it worked, and then when I did a clean rebuild, it didn't work, it caused these crazy errors, and it turned out to be that this was just unnecessary. So these these are absolutely necessary though. Code signing allowed, code signing required, and code signing identity. So um, <clears throat> yeah, when it builds the iOS release version though, it doesn't need any, it actually code signs it. So release takes a little longer, that's okay. So I can build now the Mac debug, Mac release, iOS debug, iOS release, all from the command line. And uh, yeah, touch assets, make sure everything's all compiled to, everything is just all dope now in this build, build script. So then as far as running it goes in the simulator, watch this, if I just, I'm gonna do, let's, let's, uh, let's actually show it all off. So um, I will modify one of the source files this is going to basically cause my build script to detect that the build script has this source cache, which it looks through the source cache to see if anything's been modified. And then if so, it actually goes and builds. But if not, it saves itself a lot of time by not building, just running without having to build. So you don't have to call Xcode build, which, call, which takes an extra one and a half seconds to two seconds every time um, just for it to go and launch Xcode build and realize it doesn't have to build anything. So basically, that's what this, I have this source cache for. This is that bit of scripting code. It basically just looks through every one, bit of the files. Oops, all the files in the um, in that source cache. If any of them have been modified, it sets this do build. If it's if do build set, then it actually calls Xcode build. So um, since we just modified input mobile, I'm going to use my command R, which is going to build and run the iOS and we'll see that it will actually launch it in the simulator and everything for us. So it will detect that, oh see it's modified source input mobile so it's gonna launch Xcode build. There's it running Xcode build, you can see how long it takes just to launch it. It takes a lot longer because I'm streaming and game show, the software is open, which is just eating a lot of CPU, so that's why this takes two to three times as long as it normally does for me. But anyways, oh, we also changed kit.cpp. So there it's done with the Xcode build part. Now it's installing songbringer.app into the simulator. This is in the background while we're not even viewing it. And then it's launching it. And then it brings the simulator to the foreground. So once it's all done, it brings it to the foreground and boom! This is the most efficient way to get the to get from code to running in the simulator that I've found. And you can see you can tell it still takes a long time. Because it's simulating this whole iPhone OS and I'm streaming and all that. So there. Songbringer running and all that. iOS from the command line. So let's go back and I'll show you those commands for running in the simulator. That's just an echo. There's just two commands right here, basically. 
Uh, the command is xe run sim control, and uh, you can type in xe run sim control help and get this list of commands that you can run for the simulator. Basically, you can create new devices, delete devices, boot devices, shut them down, install apps, uninstall apps, launch apps, terminate apps. There's a lot you can do. Um, so yeah. XC run sim control install booted is just the device that's booted right now and then you pass it in your path to your your app that you've built and then uh, when you want to launch it once it's installed you launch it so um, sim control launch booted sim bundle ID is a, whatever bundle ID for your app and then um, this command to open the simulator is exactly the same as make sim it just co calls open a simulator which is you know open app simulator with the args for your current device and uh, I do that again and it what all that does is it causes the simulator to be focused and so it brings it to the foreground when it's all installed and launching so I can basically keep on coding in the background until it finally actually launches so saving myself the most amount of time possible and uh, man, this is some quality of life right here. This is like the fastest I can get the iOS to build and the most efficient. So, yes, let's get this checked in. I've modified a few things. Source kit, let's check that in first. I just changed it so it actually uses the C++ log file output rather than using printf. Uses some C wizardry to copy the printf statements back into the log, anyways. So that makes it more efficient, basically. So whenever we output something to the log, it outputs faster to the log.txt in the simulator and the iOS version. So let's commit that. All right, so let's get a little view of what else has changed here. I beefed up my make file so we can make, open up the simulator, run the iOS, or make, build the iOS project, build the iOS release, run the iOS project, and run the iOS release. Uh, okay, and then we've also got build script is way smarter. It can do either platform, Mac, or iOS. It shows what platform it's building, so you can check right here, build, debug, iOS, it's nice. And we're good to go, let's check all that in. Boom! Okay, so today's first second task is to see if I can get the actual Xcode project to not sign. I think I can actually pass in those um, code signing flags and all that. I think it's possible to add in some some of that. to the Xcode project. Okay, so we're here. We've got the Songbringer iOS project open. So last night I was having a lot of problems, troubles trying to do all this because there is no way to set your code signing required to know or your code signing allowed to know in Xcode, but I think there is. I'll show you what I mean. You can add custom stuff. So, when we are in debug mode, 
and we are using the iOS simulator SDK we're gonna set don't code sign this is what I was trying to do last night but it wasn't working so you need to how do you actually add I'm not sure if you can actually add um, this stuff in oh here we go user find oh, I'm not sure how to actually Add user to find. Oh, here we go. But we only want that. for the debug. So how do we do that? Ah, oh, damn. Let's see if we can kind of hack it in the project. File, there we go, something like that. That's all we want to do. Yeah, okay, let's just close the Xcode and do this manually. Hope it doesn't mess anything up. But that's what we got Git for. Okay, let's open that up. Projects, iOS, Songbringer, project.p, bx, proj. Just jump to where we change one thing. And let's go. Code sign required, what was that? Code signing required. Sweet, this is all in Vim. You can use Vimmy stuff. Whoops, why didn't that work? Like, oh, whatever. Yeah, code signing required for ice phone simulator is new. And code sign allowed. No. Okay, let's open that back up. Close that code on us. This is a nice and neat little three line change. Let's hope this works. Open back up this iOS project. Let's go and see if it has it in the user defined settings. It is, great. We've got code signing allowed, set to no, and everything else is default. Oh, that's weird. Let's hope it's uh, that work. This all works right. Okay. Uh, Alt. Let's touch something. Let's make sure as we're we're actually changing something. There, I got the start button set to a blue color. Okay. Let's build. Watch this build log. See what happens. Filing that input mobile. Linking, copying stuff. Oh, sweet, it didn't, ha <laughs> ha. Yes, it did not code sign. 
Let's see if it can run. I think it did this before where it, it used to not, it, it just, Xcode doesn't even highlight the simulator if it's open. Oh, it does. Okay, it was just taking a while, it must have been, to install it. You can tell how much slower it is running it in Xcode versus running it straight from the command line. Both of them are slow, but Xcode is like mega slow. But ultimately a necessity to have this ability uh, because when I'm debugging, it's just essential to be able to set breakpoints and use Xcode. You can use LLDB from the command line, but that's a bitch. Even just getting that set up would be a bitch. Xcode is really nice to debug and cool. We got that little blue um, pause button. So I'm gonna just background the app that causes it to copy its log.txt and all that and then we can close it. Cool, let's check that again. Let's make sure that works if we close the simulator, right? And basically what I'm trying to check here is that if I reopen the simulator, is it gonna cause any issues with that code signing not happening? Let's make sure that works. So it's launching and stuff. Is exactly why I'm making all these quality of life improvements because you see just how long this stuff takes right I mean shaving off like 30 seconds to a minute is significant and that's kind of almost how much it is just running from the command line versus running in Xcode I think this is gonna work yeah cool nice that's great I can't believe that works. So you don't you don't technically need to uh, um, use a custom Xcode build command to run your own unsigned iOS apps in the iPhone simulator. Which <laughs> I don't know why Xcode makes you sign apps in the first place for the simulator. So just trying to keep it all the same, whatever. Okay, let's check the release project. And we want to make sure that the release project, let's edit some more code here. Let's make that button red this time. So we know things have changed and also just, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna watch the build script. Good, I had this built already. I'm glad I didn't clear out my build cache because that would have taken forever. So there, yeah, we, we got a uh, input mobile built, running stuff, copying things. So what we wanna see is we wanna see it, cut, it do this signing phase. Sign, sombringer.app. There you go. This is going to take a minute. Well, 
how long is this? 10 seconds or so? 10 to 15 seconds just to sign the app there. Now we're launching. Cool. All I wanted to see was that it signed songbringer.app. Beautiful. And just to confirm, the debug, see, did not sign. Release did sign. That is a beautiful thing. Okay, the next thing I want to try is building it for my iPhone. Let's make sure that building for the iPhone, even in debug mode, let's try debug mode on iPhone. This is going to take a minute because it's going to have to recompile, but yeah, we'll start with the debug mode because we want to see, we want to confirm that debug mode See, it's, the only thing we've changed is, uh, let's get this building while I'm talking. The only thing that's changed is the project PBX file, which is only should be only applying to the iPhone simulator platform. So even though we're running in debug mode, our SDK is not the simulator. So it should still sign this. And um, yeah. God, we could probably make this build faster if we took away this standard architecture and just built ARM64. But no, let's not let's not worry about that right now. Let's focus on this first part here. It's actually building quite fast for having the game show running here in the background. I mean, usually this seems like it takes way longer. Some kind of flying ant looking thing crawling on my iPhone cord. If anybody's out there lurking, what's up, lurkers? Hi, how you doing? It's Friday night. I'm streaming on a Friday night, which for dev streams is usually a slow experience in my. Now three years of streaming development. Has it been that long? 2015, 2016, 2017. This is now 2018. This is my fourth year streaming. Wow. Time flies. And the quality has not improved much. <laughs> actually, the quality has gone down a bit, actually, in the video. I used to stream at 800p. Somehow my internet was fast at first. And I had to, somehow my internet just went super slow and I had to s switch to 720p. But that helped, it really helps my overall system performance while trying to, trying to stream all this for you on this old laptop. This laptop from 2013. Oh my God, this thing is old, but it's still, it's still a good laptop. It's just 
not as fast. Retro Nader. What's up, Retro Nader? How you been, man? I have been loving your tweets, dude. I have been checking out a lot of your art. Really cool, dude. You're making some progress. I love you. I'd love to see your art making this so much progress, dude. It's sweet. I love your art. I like your perspective on art too. You have a lot of good things to say about pixel art. Yeah, it's um I'm in Thailand right now. So, I've had some life changes and stuff, but uh yeah, I'm traveling kind of I'm working out of Thailand for these for about 6 months of this first part of the year. I'm back in I'll be back in Oakland in early June. Yes, yes, I was in Oakland. Yep. So yeah, I'll be back in the States in like the first week of June. So I only got like a month left here in Thailand. How you been, man? What's up with you? All right, it's finally leaking. Let's make sure this does do its signing phase it should and then we'll launch it on my phone just to make sure it works signing beautiful oh that's what i wanted to see everything working as it should so far we're gonna have to test out the release mode and then we'll go back to the command line make sure everything is still working there yes yes i am traveling alone i am now single that's kind of the reason I'm here in Thailand. It's because I'm single now. Oh, really? You'd spend a month in Indonesia? Oh, whoa, that's cool. Which part, man? They're out with this Indonesia's huge. Jakarta or Bali or or what? I wonder if this would be faster to install if it were all one big zip file. It might be. You're great. Yeah, man. Right? It's mainly just a text adventure, which is sweet. I freaking love text adventures. But yeah, adding in some art would is always cool. Especially rad pixel art. If anybody's watching this video on YouTube later on, or if you're lurking right now or whatever, Retronator's making a game. Retronator, what's your um oh you're in Bali? Cool. What's the name of your game again? Um, but you can follow Retronator on Twitter. I think your your Twitter is just Retronator as well, right? And you can also follow him on Tumblr um, and a bunch of other places. I would highly recommend that. Retronator is a cool guy to follow. Puts out a lot of rad art and good advice too. He's got great advice, good perspective on you know sharing like other people's art and st other people's rad pixel art and stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, Seminyak. I don't know how to say these, actually. Ubud, Seminyak. I really want to get to Bali at some point. All right. We are running Songbringer on my phone. Let's make sure this... Yeah, cool. Sword works. Top hat works. The pause button is red. You can see it kind of... Oh, it's called Pixel Art Academy. Cool. All right. Yeah, cool. Those are your Twitters. Nice. Okay, let's get this building for in release mode. I can't really see that being failing, but let's just do it anyways. Check everything out here. It's going to take a minute. Let 
And just to double check, yeah, that signed it and validated it. Cool. While that's building, let's check out some of Retronator's stuff. Sweet. Oh, you went to the US? Oh, oh, okay. You're back in Slovenia? Yeah, go back to surfing in Bali? Sweet, man. Yeah. What's great about this kind of lifestyle of like, you know, is like it doesn't cost that much. My apartment is like $300 here a month compared to $900 a month in Oakland sharing an apartment. Like that apartment was $1,800 for a really basic, like nothing two bedroom apartment. And compare that to, you know, I had an apartment in Chiang Mai, Thailand for 300 bucks a month. Now I have an apartment, well, it's more like a bungalow it's it's more Bali like island style down here. I'm on Koh Phangan in Thailand, but yeah, also 300 bucks a month, so you can live pretty much on the cheap. And dude, up in Chiang Mai, there were people living. They had apartments for a hundred dollars a month. And if you cook all of your own food, <clears throat> there's a challenge out there. I don't know who who started it or whatever, but like, there's some challenge out there for people that can live for an entire month for 300 dollars including food, everything, rent, food, everything, $300 or less. And people are doing it. It's like, it's amazing. I know they've done it in Chiang Mai. Pico 8. Is your game going to run on Pico 8? Yeah, 870 bucks for a room in Berkeley. Yeah, which is cheap, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Just to see how far that money goes over here, you know? In Southeast Asia, it's amazing. <coughs> Your budget right now is two fifty for rent, so you can uh, so you can save up for travel. Cool, nice man. <coughs> oh, good point. How do I handle visas? Yes. Um, yeah, you, I still have to do, uh, it, they call it border hopping, where you have to go run to a border and come back. Um, <clears throat> but yes, I, before I came to Thailand, you have to do it outside of Thailand, or at least this is, this is the United States. You know how visas work like differently for each country, but for the United States citizen at least, um, you can apply for a six-month tourist visa it costs extra money i think it costs like 200 bucks it basically allows me to stay in thailand for two months at a time so every two months i have to go hop across the border and come back but i can keep doing that uh so the regular visa or whatever you you have you only get like one shot or something like that like you come in the country and once you leave you're done something like that you know things change a lot out for six months and but after the six months you have to go get another six month visa or or just wait till it renews I don't know how long you have to wait till you can just come back or whatever but yeah basically I just said I had to go to a Thai embassy in the United States and pay them some money <laughs> it wasn't that hard they checked a lot of stuff though but um 
countries that did not, you know, Malaysia is actually pretty cool. Malaysia, you can get in for three months without paying them anything. They just they just give you a three month visa right then. And Malaysia has really grown on me. Kuala Lumpur is a really quality city. It's pretty dope. How's it? How does it work for Indonesia? Yes, check this out. Look at these illustrations. These are beautiful. Nice. It's gorgeous. I want to build up my concept art skills for my next game. I want to want to have a, like a good 10 to 12 different like really awesome concept art pieces that show off and make the game seem really compelling. That's cool. Makes me think of Yosemite. It's all built yet? <laughs> Not quite. Oh man. Well, I knew this would take forever. It's cool. Forest of Liars. April 3rd. And are they still on Kickstarter? Oh, let's check out their Kickstarter. That was only like a week ago. Yeah? Nice. Better back this project. Where's that remind me button? Remind me. Cool. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm really getting into concept art lately too. When you're in Bali, oh, your upload's only one megasecond right now. Dang. Um, I'm actually streaming right now on my freaking 4G phone. I got a just a hotspot connection going on my. It's only co it costs like 500 baht a month. What's that? That's 15 bucks. Cost me 15 bucks a month for my phone, and that gives me 4G internet unlimited. And um, hotspot works. I'm actually streaming off a of freaking hotspot, which is faster than the internet here at my 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 Wi-Fi here at this bungalow or whatever you want to call this place I'm at. Um, so yeah, but in Chiang Mai, I'm on a, I'm on an island right now, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's unlimited. It's freaking it's awesome. It's the company's called AIS. It's worked amazing the whole time I've been here in Thailand. 4G internet on a on a backwaters island right now. <clears throat> so yeah, that's awesome. The internet's been pretty good here in Thailand. The internet was even better in Malaysia, uh, but I've heard, yeah, I've, I've heard that too. I've heard that Bali is pretty bad internet, even when you go to like shops and look at Wi-Fi and all that. I'm on an island called Koh Ponyang, Koh Ponyang. Some one of those, however you pronounce it. Uh, it's in the the Andaman Sea, 
the Southern Thailand Sea. I don't know what you, I forget what you call the sea, the ocean right here. Um, it's just really, the bigger, the bigger islands, yeah, Copenhagen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The bigger island around here is Koh Samui. I'm, I'm interested in exploring that one some more. It's Koh Samui's a little more commercial. Copenhagen's more like hippie, hippie vibes. I guess I'm a hippie at heart. All right, at long last, we are performing install actions to confirm that the iOS release build also signs. We knew this would happen. And I just want to see this, make sure it runs on my iPhone. It's running. It's cool. It's going to be fine. Oh, Hacker Paradise is going there in May 20th to June 16th. What? I will be here for some of them days. What's what's Hacker Paradise? Tell me about that again. Cool, it works. We're running on my iPhone in release mode. Dope. Let's make sure that the command line build now works. Virtual exists. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Um, if you're just joining the stream right now, I'm working on um, the iOS version of Songbringer. Okay, we can close Xcode now. We're done with this. I can't believe that worked. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, can I can I meet this hacker for paradise? Oh, you pay two thousand a month and they take care of everything for accommodations, co working, all that. Oh, dude, I gotta, I gotta go find those people and say hi to them then. Um, cause I, they might even be going to the co working spot that I go to occasionally. Yeah, I get you. I get you. That's cool. It's called Hacker Paradise. Sweet. Yeah, there's a couple of those now. I've heard of a couple like different ones where they get you. They kind of hook up your your accommodation, your co-working, and well, yeah, you can do it yourself for less. But two, actually, two thousand a month is really not that bad. Cool. I definitely want to go say hi to them. At least, you know, because I'm already here. I'm already kind of established with my my apartment and, and you know, working here from from my bungalow. So, okay, all we got to do is, like, undo that input mobile. Oh, let's make sure that, okay, let's make sure this still works from the command line. We're going to change that button to green now. And I'm just going to hit Command B to build. It should detect that we have modified input mobile. It'll rebuild the project and it will not sign. It should not sign. Oh, we can actually remove a few things from the signing. Yeah, no, nothing has to be reprogrammed. Well, no, that's kind of a lie. Like, there's a lot to do to like get the touch controls to work. But yeah, the whole core of Songbringer is the exact same code. I'm using an engine called Cocos 2DX, which runs on iOS, Mac, Windows, Linux, Android even. Oh my god, it's a co-space? That's exactly what I... That, that's so funny, because that's where I've been co-working. Wow. Okay, I know where to, I know where to go. They're here May 20th through the 6th or something of June, or the middle of June. I will definitely go say hi and see, what, see what's up with those guys. That's cool. Okay, good. It touched songbringer.app, but it did not sign it. Um, let's make sure we can still... Oh, let's... Um, 
we may not even need whoa the build script since we have um, code signing identity already set up we might just be able to go like this now all we need for extra build args should just be iPhone simulator we can get rid of all this code signing stuff so let's touch input mobile again and rebuild and it should still not code sign cool I'll check this out thanks for that thanks for the heads up retronator back to coding got you man no Android is not coming Songbringer will not be coming to Android it will be coming to iOS though Yes, it should be able to run on iOS 10. Um, it sh I think the minimum required is going to be 8.0. Don't quote me on that. I could check right now, actually. What are we provisioning? Pro uh, actually, I'm not sure what about that because eventually we might change just based on what's required. But uh, let's get that. What is the... Uh, I think it's 8.0. I think it's 8.0, but yeah. Why not Android? Because Android is super expensive to build for. So basically, the only reason it's even coming out on iOS is that the Kickstarter project, that was one of the first stretch goals. So <clears throat> the stretch goal succeeded. You know, it was it's like a cool way of rewarding backers. Like, hey, cool, we're bringing it to iOS. So that got confirmed because people reached the first stretch goal. The second stretch goal was Android. We didn't make that goal though. So it costs a lot, and it costs so much money and time and effort to develop for Android because the devices are freaking millions. They're just like fragmented as heck, buggy as all hell. Android development is even slower than iOS development. I mean, it's just like a bitch. It's a huge bitch. It doesn't matter that it's only 15 bucks to get a dev account. I'm talking about testing and um, and and bugs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's what makes it really expensive. Literally, it would cost me like an extra month or two. Even though all the code is going to be the same, to just about all the code is going to be almost exactly the same to do the touch controls for Android as it will be for iOS. It'll be so hard just to test, debug, deal with all the issues on Android. It's crazy, man. Oh, cool. You're with them for a month in Bali. Oh, in Peru as well? Yeah, right. When you when you know how to do it yourself, it costs half that price. I think I'm living I'm living here in Thailand for about a thousand dollars a month right now. I'm splurging a little bit though. You know, I'm eating out a lot, so it's probably costing me more like fifteen hundred bucks a month. But still, it's pretty cheap. I live on a budget. I'm an indie developer. <laughs> I, I found out that most indie developers make less than minimum wage with their games. Yeah, Devo. Yes. It is quite a pain. Is the Switch version planned? I have no answer for you right now. That's not a yes and not a no. It's a dot dot dot. Android is a confirmed no, though. Okay, so we've... T it t oh, great. It did not... S awesome! Let's see that one more time. I was kind of distracted there for a second. I'm going to touch this. We're going to rebuild, and it should not sign. Even though I've turned off code signing, or turned off those extra bits of build args, 
which did the code signing from the command line. But now since we built it right in, straight into the Xcode project, we're up to, yes! Oh, this is so dope. So anyways, if you guys were, uh, if you guys missed it, I basically have been making my iOS development a lot faster, the quality of life for developing on iOS faster by making it so I can build from the command line and run from the command line. So let's run this. And it basically saves a hell of a lot of time. <laughs> it, it not only builds faster, it installs to the simulator faster, it launches the simulator faster, and we're talking significantly faster. Like Xcode is just slows it all down like crazy a lot. But Xcode is a complete necessity for debugging. When I want to set up breakpoints and step through the code and debug stuff, like that's what I open Xcode for. But for the most part, I can just leave Xcode closed, keep the simulator open, and develop here from the command line in Vim. From now on, this is so dope. So there you go. Here's Xcode or Songbringer running on iPhone. So some of the next steps for for Songbringer on iOS are to um, move around the HUD items. So I've got basically I've got the sword and bombs and your stuff that you can use on top of these buttons. But it's, like it's just covering up the courage and the uh, and the map. So I want to put the map in the middle. The courage here, right here in the middle as well, and then be able to actually move. There'll be like an edit screen where you can edit your input, and you'll be able to actually move every one of these buttons and customize them wherever you want. So you can drag your D-pad somewhere else, you can drag your L button somewhere else, and all that. That's my timer for the end of the stream. Oh no, it's also for iPads. Yeah, it's going to be for iPhone and iPad. Yep. Not the watch, not the not the watch, and I don't think the TV either, but definitely iPhones and iPads. I'm not exactly sure what the pricing structure will be yet either. It might we, we might be selling it, or it might be um, might be free to play for the first dungeon or something like that, you know, or you have to pay you have to pay like an in-app purchase to continue playing it, something like that. I don't know. How that's gonna work? I know, right? <laughs> trying to trying to play Songbringer on a watch when you have six buttons you need to press and a D-pad. Oh my God, this is so sweet! I'm I'm checking this in. So if you're if you've been following along here, I'm gonna show you what what just changed. Let's get input mobile unedited. Yeah, Jesus. There we go. Now all we've changed is that and that. All right. So basically, I, ha I had all at the beginning of this stream. This video will be on YouTube for anybody who's just following along now, and maybe you're interested in iPhone development as well. But basically, getting this all running faster from the command line, I covered all of what I got, what I did at the beginning of this video. So if you want to check that out, it'll be on on YouTube later on tonight. Um, but basically, what I just did in this step. Is I made it so even even the even running it from Xcode, it doesn't have to sign the iPhone app when it runs in the simulator, and this is all that needed to be added. Code you have to set your code signing identity to blank, code signing required to know, and very importantly, your code signing allowed also to know. But this is all only if you're running it on the simulator. And you also have to hack your simulator. Yeah, right. Okay, so I'm checking this in and this is all I'm going to be able to do for tonight's stream. It's Friday night. I'm taking the rest of the night off. I'm going to watch a movie or something. Something like that. Let's get this code checked in though. Oops. Makes Xcode iOS project able to build for simulator without signing. So dope. Oh, 
All right. So tomorrow, I can start clean. All my all my quality of life improvements for iOS are finished. We're talking shaving off at least 30 seconds on builds. Um, shaving off a good 10 to 20 seconds every time I run the app in the simulator. This is going to save a ton of time. It's 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 a, it's a huge psychological advantage. Like it's so disheartening to open up Xcode and then click the play button and wait like 60 seconds or something crazy for it to launch the simulator and open up your app in the simulator. And once it's even opened, you press play again and it takes a good like 30 seconds for it to just launch Songbringer in the simulator. It's so slow. But here from the command line, it is significantly faster. So this has really got me amped up. Um, so in addition to Songbringer already kind of running on, on iOS, from now on, I'm basically doing the, all the really cool improvements, the cherries on top, making the, uh, making the interface look you know, that much better. Like I was talking about, um, you being able to edit all these buttons where things are at. Um, and making this look better, like, you know, it, you know, putting the courage in the middle and the map here in the middle and also being able to drag your map and drag your courage other places. Um, making just sure, making sure the touch interface just is really, really good. Making it as fast as possible, as responsive as possible and editable. Like being able to change the scale of these buttons would be cool too. I know, right? If it compile takes more than five to 10 seconds. Which is which is awesome. That's what that's what developing on Mac and Windows and you know for desktop basically for even for Linux, it's just super fast. But like development for iOS and Android too is slow as hell because you either have to launch it in a simulator, which is like slow is all slow can be, or you have to launch it on your device, which is also takes forever, forever. You have to like freaking transfer files, install your app onto your phone, launch it on your phone, attach a debugger to your phone. Like no matter what, iOS development is slow as hell compared to desktop development. So these little improvements, we're going to go a long ways towards a happier development cycle, which shouldn't take that long. It really is. I should probably be able to have this all playable. I bet you I can have a speed run of Songbringer done by the end of next week. Like I'll be able to actually play it on my phone and get all the way through the whole game and have everything be fine by the end of next week. I say that now, but it, but it might not be possible. But I mean, it's all pretty much working. See, so you can like, you can walk around, you can transition areas, you can use your sword, I'm using my bombs. It's just hella slow because we're, we're in the simulator. Here we did a parry. Let's eat some cacti. You can pause the game. Access whatever settings are available on iOS. It's also hella slow because I'm running streaming software right now, which is eating up a good 50% of my CPU total. But anyways, so you got, yeah, settings work like you can save and quit, go back to the main menu, Everything, everything's pretty much working. Um, it's just like dialing in the touch interface. Um, also dialing in, I have to change up this, um, your equipment menu might have to change a bit. Like I'm gonna have to, you're gonna drag items, like with your touch controls, you'll drag an item into your equip slots. Um, and I might have to actually separate out so there's a map on one screen and equipment on a different screen so that uh, things can be a little bigger for your thumbs, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it's already working and functioning here on iOS. So, so yeah, so that's it for this stream. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. And um, yeah, I'll be streaming again soon, probably early next week. I know, yeah, it's no, it runs hella fast. It's like a 60 frames a second even on iOS. But yeah, simulator is just hella slow. Hella slow. Okay, thanks for watching again. Check you guys out next time.